Hi, welcome everybody. It's Marilyn here with Saturday Sampler Daydream and believe it or not, we're in month 11. It's November and this month we're not doing any cutting, but yes, we are doing sewing. And this month we're going to be putting the quilt center assembly together. So um, hopefully you're You've caught up, you're where you should be. And last month, if you remember correctly, we were doing the um, cornerstone piecing. If you didn't do it, look at that last video. And we were also doing the sashing blocks, okay? So hopefully you're all caught up. You've kept things in order because we did 17 of some colorways with um, background fabrics and fabric 10 and 11 and those beautiful fabric 12 kind of purpley looking colors. And then we had our cornerstones and we had a couple in one colorway, some with color 11 and then some with the background in color 11 only in corners. So, and I did emphasize to keep those separated. If you didn't, well, then it's a free for all, but you know, here we go. So um, when you look at the picture, you can't really tell, or I can't tell that it's not all the same fabric. You know, it's it's hard in these photographs, but in person, if you've seen my quilt in person and you look closely and see these magic wands aren't only good for drawing lines in your piecing, they're good for, you know, pointing or, you know, whacking your neighbor, you know, quilting if you need to. Okay, well, maybe you don't, but here you go. So. Um, when you look up close, you can see that here's my sashing in different colors, and I have it with a cornerstone of different colors budding up. Sometimes it's the same, and a lot of times I tried to, you know, mix it up a little bit where I could. So it is actually different colors in the layout. So it, you know, when you look away, these backgrounds are mixed up, and it kind of gives the quilt... A little bit of sparkle all right so when you're talking I mean they just basically tell you to lay the quilt out first of all it tells you all of the quilt block numbers so if you kept them organized it tells you where they recommend them going like here's block 10 5 and 8 you know and so on and this is just a suggestion you can lay them out any way that you would like it's your quilt you can do what you want to do. This is just a suggestion. I did lay it out as they suggested because, you know, I was making the sampler so that you could follow along with it. So mine is laid out just like the picture in the book in the final assembly. Now, you are going to be putting all the sashing in between, which is nice. So you're not putting, you know, budding up points to point, which is what I love about sashing. But we are going to be watching that sewing because you do have points on the outside and we're trying not to lose our points. So when I did sew the sashing on, I usually always had the points, the blocks on top of the sashing. You know, often when we're putting like, you know, a small piece on top of a big block, we have that small piece and we're sewing the small piece on. But usually when I was sewing, I had the block here so that I could watch that point so that I didn't cut it off. So I kind of did it backwards, but it paid off because I generally didn't lose my points. You know, you could see my points in the end, you know, and we have a strong contrast. We have light fabric against dark. So if you're cutting off those points, you can really see that loss. So pay attention when you're, when you're piecing that together. And then when you're pressing, every time I sewed, you know, a sashing to a block, I did stop and press it and they have you pressing towards the sashing. That way, um, you, you like this corner, so is going to be pressed towards the sashing there and that's going to be pressed, pressed towards the sashing this way. That way they nest so that you have nice nesting as you go. And I do always press as I go. I don't just sew the whole thing and then press afterwards because it's a lot of pressing then all at once. And sometimes it doesn't turn out as well, so I always press as I go. Um, so anyways, you're going to be first, I did lay it out so that I could make sure I had things mixed up. And they do have a little guide for you to help. 
So it shows you the cornerstones here, and it will say, like, here's this plain cornerstone. Here's one of the cornerstones with the 11 in the corner, a single 11, an 11 here, and a plain. And then here's one with, like, a double 11 and a double 11. So I basically got my cornerstones laid out first with my blocks, and then I went back and tried to pay attention to the color of the um, sashing strips and followed along with how they had them. And then if I didn't like it, I mixed it up a little bit. So I played with them and flipped them around as best as I could and how I liked the layout. And sometimes if I couldn't really tell what the layout looked like, I flipped them around a little bit. But, you know, you look at, um, these will, um, you know, lay out, the skinny ones will force you into where the the skinny one is because you have a fat cornerstone and it has to have a fat side here and a skinny side of the sashing goes with the skinny side of the cornerstone so you are forced into which side the sashing sits in which is kind of nice so really pay attention to the layout here it does assist you with that and I did lay out the whole thing on the floor and uh, fortunately I have cats so they help me with the layout you know how well that goes um, yeah they is that really, right me yeah they really like helping you lay out yeah so I lay it out and I take a photograph of it um, because you know things happen sometimes if you don't get it picked up fast enough and they get mixed up so anyways then you'll start piecing along the first one and I'm pressing as I go so press towards the big sashing pieces and then when you do this press towards the sashing and that way as I said earlier you will have nice nesting and then I will like piece that one together and that and then I'll sew those together and I do pin in those intersections so that I have a nice you know meet up and then, then what I did is I pieced that piece and then that one and I pieced those together. So I kind of had pairs going and then I pieced bigger pieces together. I don't know. I like to work in small session, sections and then piece them into bigger sections. That way I don't like have this and then piece that and it gets bigger and bigger. When I do little sections and then start piecing them to bigger sections, it just, for me, makes it a little bit um, easier to go. And um, all of a sudden, before you know it, you have your middle. And then in December, you're going to get your last kit and we'll be making, piecing that last outside border. It's a little section here with that same idea that mimics it, which I love. I love that look. And then you'll have your last single strip that goes around and your binding will be included in that. So I'll show you how that's cut. And then you'll have your, your, your quilt ready to go. So anyways, enjoy, work on getting that together, and we'll see you, we'll see you in December. Thank you.